let's take a look at magnetism. So first of all, I want to distinguish between electric and magnetic. So far we have looked at electric things like electric charges and electric fields or circuits which are driven by electric fields and electric charges. When we talk about magnetic things, that's a separate phenomenon. Uh, so I want to distinguish between that. There is electric and there is magnetic. And if you go far enough in physics, um, you'll see that electric and magnetic can be combined into a single concept of electromagnetism. But for now, I want to keep them separate. So I'll draw a little diagram. Um, electric fields, those are created by charges, positive charges and negative charges. And we have a way to represent that with electric field lines. When we talk about magnetic fields, those are not directly caused by charges. Those are created between what we call poles. And electric charges come in positive and negative. Magnetic poles come as north and south. And I'll draw an example of a north pole and a south pole together with the magnetic field. And the magnetic field lines have many of the same properties as electric field lines if the few have a stronger field and do not cross. One thing that's a little different is that the magnetic field lines emanate or come out of the North Pole and terminate or go into the South Pole. An interesting fact about magnetic poles is that they cannot exist by themselves. There are no magnetic monopoles. So you cannot have a North Pole hanging out by itself and you cannot have a South Pole hanging out by itself. The North Pole and the South Pole always go together. And that is pretty different than electric charges where, yeah, sure, it's easy to have a positive charge hanging out by itself. That's what a proton is. And it's easy to have a negative charge hanging out by itself. That's an electron. But there are no such magnetic monopoles that we know of. And there is a lot of discussion about why that might be and not a lot of agreement about why that is. But anyway, that's getting a little bit beyond what we want to talk about. So where do these magnetic fields come from? Well, magnetic fields are created by charges in motion. Charges in motion create magnetic fields. Uh, we've already seen charges in motion. If you have charges moving along a wire, we call that a current. So a current will create a magnetic field. Well, how are the current and the magnetic field related? I'm going to draw a diagram of that, and I'm going to use a couple symbols that you might not be familiar with. The circle with a dot, that means directed out of the page. And the circle with a cross, that means directed into the page. So if I have a current over here, that symbol means that the current is directed out of the page. So imagine a wire that is coming out of the page or screen directly toward you. That would be carrying a current directly toward you with this circle and a dot. And in that case, the magnetic field around that wire would look like this. It goes around counterclockwise. And you notice that the magnetic field lines get further apart from each other the further away from the wire I go. So the magnetic field is weaker further away from the wire. All right, now let's draw the magnetic field around a current that's going into the screen. If I do that, it looks like this. The magnetic field is clockwise around that wire, and it's stronger closer to the wire and weaker further away from the wire. So why is the magnetic field that way, or how did I know that? Well, there is a rule to determine the direction of the magnetic field near a current, and it is called the right-hand rule or rather a right-hand rule. It turns out there's multiple right-hand rules. So just keep in mind, you're going to see more right-hand rules in the future. The current one is the right-hand rule to find the direction of the magnetic field near a current. So the way that I do this, and there are different ways to explain how to find this, but my method is I place my right thumb in the direction of the current. Then I take the fingers of my right hand and I place them at the point where I want to know about the direction of the field. And if I do that, 
then the magnetic field is directed out of my palm. So this seems like a bunch of weird magic mystic stuff, right? I'm taking my right hand and I'm moving it in certain ways. It seems like a strange way to do physics, but it works. And honestly, it's not the physicist's fault. This was actually devised by mathematicians. So uh, if you don't like the right hand rules, uh, don't blame physics. Sorry. Um, but test it out. Test it out. Look at the direction of the magnetic field around a current carrying wire pointed out of the page. If you put your thumb in the direction of the current, your right thumb in the direction of the current, so your right thumb directed out of the screen, and then if you put your fingers where you care about the magnetic field, so let's say we care about the magnetic field on the left side of the wire. So your thumb is pointing out of the screen, and then take your right fingers and put them over on the left side of the wire. Okay, and if you do that, then the magnetic field points out of your palm. And if you do that, the magnetic field at that mo location points down, right? Your palm should be facing down toward the bottom of the screen if you do that. That's the direction of the magnetic field at that location. Now, if you cared about the direction of the magnetic field on the right side of the wire, you have to move your hand around. Your thumb still points out of the screen, but now put your fingers on the right side of the wire. If you do that, then your palm now faces toward the top of the page and that's the direction of the magnetic field on that side. So it takes a little bit of practice and you may feel silly and awkward when you do it at first, but it works. And the last thing that we need to say about magnetic fields is that they are vectors. Um, and if you want to find the total magnetic field at a location, you would take the vector sum of all the individual fields. So I'll draw a little example of that. I'll say I have two wires directed out of the page next to each other. If I wanted to find the magnetic field at a point halfway between them, I would have to find the magnetic field from one wire at that location and the magnetic field from the other wire at that location. And then I'd have to add them both up to find the total magnetic field. And in this situation, if I have two identical currents flowing out of the page halfway between the magnetic field would be zero.